So welcome everybody, welcome to Energy Play Shop 15. We, <laughs> this is the 15th of these, of these. so uh, wonderful. And uh, today is August the 18th, 2022. The theme for um, Energy Play Shop number 15 is the letting go of the past. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe two, three weeks ago, when I first learned the, the process of letting go of uh, programs and past life and programs and all that, I actually put it in one of the play shops already. However, I, I believe it was last week that we had a, a um, QA with uh, Sifu James. And actually I, I realized a lot, um, like there's a couple of clarification from him that I think it's it actually is going to make uh, this process even more powerful. So that's why I want to cover this subject again, just to make sure that um, everybody's clear <clears throat> and that you can really uh, use this process to um, make a difference in your life. Because I, I do feel that um, I've been using this process a couple more times now, not every day, but definitely um, at least once a week, I would do some programs releasing because we we are such um, we are such a sponge, or at least I am, anyways. That that I I tend to pick uh, to pick up other people's programs quite easily, and I do find that just intentionally doing this process, it, it really helps me to stay more center to um, my own being. So, so that's why I want to make sure that, you know, um, to cover all the, the details of this process to the best of my ability. So um, as in other times, I actually just want to, um, share the, oh, hang on, just to, to share the, um, huh. okay, so this is it, okay, hang on, I am actually just trying to do this, um, okay, yes. So this is the PDF for this evening. So we're gonna do the welcoming part, which we already in, in. and then I'll, I'll be doing a presence meditation, a short one, just so that we can all get more present. And then I'm, I'm gonna cover letting go of the past. So letting go of programs, and all those things. And then I would be um, doing a process, which is to let go of programs, but more for current life programs. And then I would go more into specifically talking about past life programs, because letting go of past life programs is um, a little bit more complicated or involved than letting go of present life programs. And so that is the agenda for this evening. So um, first I just want to open the floor up to, to ask for um, if anybody has any questions from previous weeks or comments that they want to bring up in, for today. So any questions, comments so far? Yes, I want to thank you for the presence meditation. It's so useful. <laughs> it really, it really brings brings me here <laughs> and uh, make me realize how how sometimes I waste my <laughs> my thoughts. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, it, I yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just wondering if um, when you say let go of programs, is it something that we can let go like a one time let go or is it something that we may have to let go of repeatedly? 
it depends on um, how the program was it. Theoretically, it should be a one-time thing if, we, if you do it properly, because um, I'm going to explain later on that we actually have um, like within our body, within our body, we store all the, the programs and we actually have it in uh, several places. So okay. we have, we have a copy of the program in our mind, a copy in our heart, a copy in our gut, and then also in the first four layers of our um, energetic bodies. So oh. if we intentionally release it from all of those places, that means all copies of the programs is released, then um, theoretically it would done. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, that's no. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so so that's why it's a little tricky um, because before I well, really not sure because we may have released something from our heart or from our mind, but we if we don't get the gut in the the, the first few layers of our energetic bodies, we don't release the programs there. Then actually the programs can um, can come back because we still have a copy of it within our body um, somewhere so so okay. that is okay so i get it when we when we get to the the, the details there then i would we'll be able to talk more about it okay thank you very much okay you're welcome any other questions or comments If not, then let's begin our um, presence meditation. So let's just start by taking in a deep breath. So just breathe in deeply. And then just let it all go slowly. And then take in another deep breath. Slowly allow your lungs, your body to fully inflate. And when you can breathe in no more, then slowly let go of your breath. One more time, just breathe in slowly. And then let go of your breath slowly. And as you let go of your breath, also let go of the tension that is in your body. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of doing it slowly. So that means elongating your breath. Use your breath to assist you in calming down. Calming down your body, relaxing, and also calming down your thoughts, your mind. And as you do that, also hold the intention that you want to bring back all of your energy to yourself. During the day, we take care of so many things. We talk to different people. We have work to do. We have our life. We have people to take care of. So many things taking our attention away. In this moment, just call back all of your attention to yourself because this time is for you. As you call back attention to yourself, just notice yourself becoming more present. Notice yourself becoming more 
and aware of your own energy. Just pay attention to what's happening inside your body. And also set the intention that you want to be connected with all of you. All of your physical body, all of your energetic bodies. You want to be connected to your soul, to the highest vibration version of you that you have access to in this moment. You want to call in all of that. And as you feel yourself while you are breathing in and out, as you feel yourself becoming more solid and present in your body, aware of what's going on inside. And as you feel more connected to all of you, then you can come back into the room and open your eyes if you have had your eyes closed. So welcome back. So let's go on to the next thing. Before I, I start to talk about how to let go of programs, I actually just want to frame it first. Because when we are talking about um, letting go of our programs, we, we often doubt ourselves. Right? Because these programs that may have been running our lives for such a long time. However, I just want to remind everybody before we continue is that we are creators. Each and every one of us are creators. We are powerful creators, not just any haphazard creators. We are actually powerful creators. We can create anything we want. We can create programs. And because we can create it, we can also let it go. We can also discreate our associations with those programs. We actually have all the frequencies. Um, no matter how advanced, how high the frequencies, how um, out of this world and blissful and close to source the frequencies, maybe we actually have all of them within us. And it's just that most of the time we don't access them. We don't um, allow those frequencies to become more present to us. We, we're just not aware of them because we are just more... Um, attracted to paying attention to fear or some of the other more low vibration frequencies, which is nothing wrong. As in my point here is that we actually have all of the frequencies, not just, the, not just some of them, we have all of them. And that we can connect with anything. We can connect with anyone that if we think that, you know, oh, this, um, Buddha or, or whomever, um, like Archangel, you may think that is just beyond your reach. No, actually, you have the ability to connect with anything and anyone, no matter where they are, whether they are in this world, in this dimension, or somewhere out there, um, maybe halfway across the galaxies, no time or, or um, distances can prevent that. And that's how powerful we are. We are powerful creators. So just let all of this sink in and let all of these 
remind us to start to grow and be the, the ground, the backdrop of what we're going to do next or everything else that we're going to do next. So I want to start to talk about the types of programs. So when I say programs, I actually mean, um, so what do I mean by programs? Programs are just thought forms. That they are just um, beliefs. They could be beliefs. They could be past experiences, or they. So, so that's what I mean by programs. It's just a thought form. And um, the way we work is that our there are certain programs that we think are important. So we we um, we keep. creating our life with those programs in mind. The program could be I'm beautiful or the program could be I am ugly. So that something like that can be a program. However, if you really um, hang on to a particular program, let's say if you actually hang on to a program that you're not enough, then everything else that you create from that um, point on has that has to conform to that program. Meaning that if you want to um, create that, you get a new job. However, because because you really want it. However, if you have this program that you're not good enough, then it actually makes it harder for you to create exactly the job that you want. So that's how programs work. That's how um, belief systems, that's how thought forms does, is that it, it, it forms a, it kind of forms a box so that um, if we believe this, this program, then these are the constraints that is going to support our belief in that program. And if we want something that is outside of this box, then it's not easy for us to get it. Um, however, we actually have the, the capacity to let go of the programs. So now let's me go back to talking about different kinds of programs. What are the different kinds of programs? So there are the programs that are not mine, meaning that um, they are just out there in the collective. Um, for example, um, that I need to get, get uh, that I, I don't trust my own immune system. I have to get, uh, take a drug or something else in order to, um, in order to make myself healthy, to keep myself healthy. So that, let's say that that is that program out there. It's not mine because in this moment, I don't believe it. However, I remember um, like, however, we may get an off day because sometimes we, we have an off day. Maybe I'm just too tired or maybe um, I have some, particular incident happened to me that made me doubt my own um, ability to, to my own immune system. So then, so even though most of the time I don't believe it, it's not mine. However, there is still that, that percentage, that margin that um, I don't fully 100% trust my own immune system. So those are kind of the, the not mine programs then. So they, they don't quite resonate with me, but it's not absolutely. So they, so those are kinds of things. So it could be, um, let's say, if my mom does not like um, people of a certain uh, nationality, 
then that is her program. But she may want to convince me because I am her daughter and, and she wants to make sure that I'm safe. So, because that's her belief that, you know, these people are not good people. So she keeps, keep on repeating to me and um, depending on how, I would say how, how um, easy I am to be influenced by her, then I may, even though it's not something that resonate with who I am. However, because my mom keeps repeating it to me day in, day out, I may decide to, okay, let's play with that pro program. It's not mine, but you know, I'll, I'll kind of play with it um, and, and just keep that in mind. So, so those uh, would, be, uh, would be under the not mine programs. They they don't quite resonate with who I am, my understanding of myself, but um, it could be programs that the people around me are very much um, they they believe in very um, strongly. So it may color how I conduct myself um, so those the, the programs that are not mine okay so there's mine programs and then there are not mine programs so not mine programs so now I, I'm going to talk about mine programs programs that are mine meaning that they actually resonate with me they resonate with my experiences um, from my life so far like these these are the things that actually have happened to me and so, um, because they have happened to me more than once, maybe a couple of times. And so I actually believe that they are true. So those are my programs. So um, in, within the my programs, there are a couple of categories. One of them is, um, they are my programs, but they are not related to the path that I'm on. So, so for example, if the path I'm on is to be a healer, but this particular program that is mine, but it's not really about healing. It may be about um, relationship or it may be about um, how much money I should charge people, so, uh, how much money that I, um, or how big a house I should have. So it may not be, particularly um, relating to the path that I'm on. So, so there's that kind of programs. And then there are the programs that are actually specifically related to the path that I'm on, the path I'm on um, to become a healer, for example. So um, examples of that may be, um, you know, the programs that um, we are powerful because if I don't believe that I'm powerful, then I, how, how am I supposed to heal other people, assist other people to heal themselves? So mm -hmm. then um, really having a good understanding of how powerful I am um, and also um, that I, how, how powerful I am. And also about, um, let's say, the beliefs that I know Sifu James have a, a belief that we, we can heal anyone. Not just the, 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 the people that are close to us, but actually even somebody, you know, halfway around the world we can still send energy to heal them. So that is a belief. And that belief is very specifically on the path, um, on my path of becoming a healer. So those would be the, what the programs that I'm referring to. And then there's also one more category is really um, programs that we take on because of a trauma. So let's say, 
Oh, okay, I'm trying to think of a trauma. Let's say, okay. So let's say when I was young, my mom was a, a um, um, really got mad uh, at me for doing a particular thing. And it was so traumatic. For example, he was so traumatic. He actually, she actually beat me up because of that. So that for a young child, that is a traumatic experience. So when, let's say if something like that happened to me, it's, it's really a program that I took on um, that actually affected me. And it has a very traumatic experience um, being associated with that. So those are particular programs that has a lot of trauma associated with it. So what, um, the, so how does all of these different programs, um, how do they play into how we can actually release them? Um, the, so the programs that are not mine, so the programs that are, that does not really resonate with me, Personally, those are really the programs that would be fairly easy to let go of. So those, so those programs, um, easy to let go of, probably only takes a couple of seconds when we do it to uh, use the, the, the procedure, then those would be gone in a couple of seconds. And then the, the programs that are not um, related to my path. So those would programs would be fairly easy and also um, safe to let go of. Um, Sifu James did mention that or advise that, you know, the, the programs that are actually related to your path is to not to mess with it too much, even if you don't particularly, um, or even if you somehow um, have heard that, okay, yeah, maybe I should let those go or if they don't so those are those are really the programs to leave alone and don't mess with them too much and then that us only that are kind of leaves the, the the programs that are trauma so as a result of trauma so for those programs yes um you can still let go of them however you need to do them slowly bit by bit meaning that um so one time you would you would um sit down and release the program that i'm responsible for let's say the story is that you know um i this actually did happen to me my my brother <laughs> my brother is a very spirited person when he was he was younger so he he got into trouble quite a lot. And uh, I remember this one time, um, he, he actually got into trouble quite a bit. And my mom didn't just punish him. He, my mom actually punished me as well, because um, according to her, that I'm responsible to, to actually stop my brother from doing that, because I'm respond I'm the older one, so I'm, I'm I'm supposed to stop her. So let's say that because of that, that is a traumatic experience because she actually beat us both up, and there was a trauma experience. So um, so I have this program that I'm responsible for other people's action. So let's say I have this this program. And it is a, a result of a, a trauma. So something like that, that is a program that is a result of trauma is to do it a little bit at a time. Because um, if you do the whole letting go at once, then it may be because uh, it's especially a program that was created such a long time ago when I, when you know, both my brother and myself are young, let's say 10 or 10 years old or younger. So when we um, a program that has been traumatic for such a long time, 
if all of a sudden I just let it go, the that will actually make a big difference to um, who I was or who I, I, I was after I released it because something that is so traumatic and happened such a long time ago, it actually has created a persona around it. And it is not advisable to just let go of it. So the way to do it is actually to, if you know that something is a, um, a result of a trauma, is to actually just set the intention that you only let go of as much of it as it is comfortable for you to deal with um, in this moment. So, so that kind of sets the tone for your for yourself to just let go of a little bit at a time. And then once you let go a bit and you kind of give yourself um, a couple of weeks to integrate all of the, the, the released um, trauma, then you do another release and only release as much as your body can comfortably handle. So that is how best to um, handle these different kinds of programs. So questions so far, any, did I lose everybody or any questions, comments so far about um, programs, how we get them Not so, really. so, so programs about like about fear or security or safety or things like that, is that all trauma related as well? It could be, it could be. So if you actually have something happen to you that is so um, dramatic, then, then yes, it could be. It, it really depends, um, depends on the circumstances. So, because I, I know a little bit more about you. So yeah, it, in, I, I would highly suggest that, yeah, in your case, yes, any, any kind of fear because um, would be trauma-based. So in that case, it, that means when you, when you start to release that is to really take it easy. Right, okay. So just set the that you only want to release as much as you your body can comfortably handle right okay. okay yep any other questions comments about releasing programs okay then let's uh, go on to the next one so i've talked about the the programs. Oh, actually, I need to talk one one more thing is um, programs that are past life versus present life. So past life programs is really not um, because you're not living the same life anymore. It's a past life. So we're going to have a I'm going to actually cover how to do uh, present life programs release first it's it's most mostly the same except that past life because it is not directly related to your present life so actually it's um we we actually need to do to have more um, energy which means we have to actually do breathing and and uh, better at getting into the right frequency. So that means that we, we have to do the breathing exercises for at least 10 minutes and really make sure that you're in um, much higher frequency. And then, um, yeah, I'm gonna, when we talk about past life, then I'm actually gonna talk about the differences. It's about, I would say 85% the same as present life. And there's 
this 15% difference to, to um, account for past life because of that. Um, it's not a present life, so therefore it's, it's that extra steps that we need to do in order to release past life programs. So now let's actually talk about where programs are stored. So programs are stored in brain area, heart, and also gut, and also the first four layers of our energetic bodies. So what, what are the first four layers of our energetic bodies? So these are the seven layers of our energetic bodies, according to Sifu James, like there are different, um, there are different, I would say there are different uh, classifications of what the seven layers of energetic bodies are. Um, however, according to Sifu James, these are the, the seven layers. So physical, etheric, emotional, mental, spiritual, cosmic, and nirvana. So the first four layers would be the physical, etheric, emotional, and mental layers. So why just the first four layers? Because the first four layers are really the four, the first four layers are most related to being in um, the, uh, the 3D environment, being within our body. So the, so that's why they are in these first four layers. When once we get to the spiritual, cosmic, and the nirvana layers, they the frequencies there um, is already so much higher that regular programs that we that run our lives as we live in this reality, um, like third dimension reality. It just is no longer relevant. That's why it's the, it's not stored there. So let me actually just go over a, so what do I mean by layers? So we do know that physical, we have a physical bodies. There are actually different layers of energetic bodies. And why seven layers? We actually have more than seven layers. However, with our, um, it's just for the time being, we can only uh, with our development, the, the development of our awareness of our consciousness, we can only see and decipher the first seven layers. We actually do know that we have more than seven layers. How many layers is actually infinite layers. So, so this is just to represent that we have all these different layers. So that is um, just to let you know what do we mean by the first four layers. So how, so then how, um, hang on, let me actually just, stop this sharing to get back. So we have a copy in our brain, in our heart, and in our gut area, and also the first four layers of our energetic bodies. So our energetic bodies, each layer is roughly one inch thick. And so the, the programs are stored there. The first four layers, so maybe so maybe around four inches out. That's when that's where the programs are being stored, and they could be anywhere. Um, they could be different areas um, in terms of our body. Could be to the left or to the right. The most important ones that we definitely need to take care of is really the the ones that are. Um, like right in the center lane. Why? Because we, within the center lane, that's that there is an energy 
there's a prana tube. It's like a, and if you have, if you're able to see energy, you would notice that there actually is this energy tube that is, um, that runs above our head. You can see it kind of sticking out from our head uh, a little bit above our crown area. And this, it actually runs within our body, all throughout our body. And it's most important to um, like clear the, the, the programs that kind of, because programs, they, they, they can, they can actually um, be, be stored in anywhere in our program, in our body and also in our energetic fields. However, if they are stored um, like somewhere that is blocking that central prana tube, then it actually uh, makes it harder for us to be connected or hear messages from our spirit guides, from our soul, from our higher self, um, from the, the, the higher guidance. So that's why it's really important to make sure that we clear any programs that's kind of blocking this center line. So that's any questions about where programs are stored? <laughs> it's um, kind of fairly straightforward. So questions in that case, I'm going to press on to talk about how the, the, the procedure, how are we going to clear them? How to clear the present life stuff. So I did mention that I'm actually going to talk about present life first, and then uh, we'll do the, the the past life. So this this is really the step by step to how to to clear present life stuff. Stuff meaning programs, thought forms, whatever name or label that you want to give to it. So first thing is we um, set up the energy because we need energy in order to be able to clear these um, energetic thought forms. So what are the energies that would be able to clear them? It's really love energy. More specifically is really uh, pure love energy. So pure love is really source love, love that is from the creator source. And because we are the creator ourselves, so we actually have this source, this pure love within us. It is just that because we have so many other thoughts in our mind that we um, don't tune in to this pure love. So the process is really with our in-breath to breathe in. So, so with the in-breath, so as we are breathing in, we set the intention that we want to activate pure love. And then with the out-breath, we're going to activate the frequency of 0 0.01. So what is the frequency of 0 0.01? This frequency is really love energy as well, but it's um, love that is from this planet, from Mother Earth. So this love, it is not the same as pure love because it is, pure love is really, um, we don't have, we don't have the frequency to measure pure love yet. However, the love that is from Mother Earth is a kind of a step down version. This love, however, our body really resonates with it. The 0 0.01 frequency of love, when we tune into this frequency, it actually helps ourselves heal and really um, our body um, really what's the word I'm looking for, really can um, 
become more vibrant, more active and more supportive with this frequency. So that's why we want to pull in this frequency as well. So pure love activated, 0 0.01 activate. So in breath, when we breathe in, we set the intention to activate pure love. And as we breathe out, we activate the, this 0 0.01 frequency. And why we do this in the out breath? Because we are bringing this energy from Mother Earth. So it's coming from um, uh, the base of our spine up. Whereas the pure love, we are bringing it from the top of our head down to the base of our spine. So it's like different direction. And then we want to make those two um, frequencies become coherent so that they work together. So the coherence activate. And then it's also very important to balance. So why, why is it important to balance? It's because um, I mentioned that we have this prana tube, this prana tube, and we bring in pure love energy, we bring in 0 0.01 energy. If we are not balanced though, the, the, the central, the prana tube will be lopsided. So when we are balanced, which means that left side is, and the right side is balanced, front and back is balanced, so that that prana tube can be all just in the middle. So when it is actually in the middle, then whatever pure love energy and also 0 0.01 energy that we, we call in would be able to flow through our body in the middle. However, if it's not balanced, if our energy is not balanced, then it may, um, it's, it's kind of going to not be able to go through our body because if it is slanted, then it cannot, this uh, prana tube won't be able to um, travel from the top of the head all the way to the base of our spine because the line is crooked. So it won't be able to travel and be able to, for our body to use it in the most efficient way. So that's why balance activate. And then we breathe this way for a few minutes, depending on how you feel um, the day that you are doing this. I think when we are doing it in a group, because in a group, this energy is more, energy is um, more powerful than probably two, three minutes would be okay. Whereas if you just, if you're doing it all by yourself, five minutes maybe. So you would know when you're there is because you can feel yourself, um, your, the palm of your hands vibrating in unison. So when, meaning that the left hand and the right hand are the same, they, they are pulsing at the same time. That's when you know that whatever it is that you're calling in, it, it is actually um, resonating with your body. So that's how your body would be able to tell you the left and the right side of your palm, they are in, in sync. When they're syncing up, that means you are there. The energy is, is working properly. So the set the frame is that you want to release all copies of the programs from your brain, heart, gut, and the first four layers of your energetic bodies and also fill it in with pure love. Whatever you release, just fill it in with pure love. Okay, so... Um, and then, and then the intentions. So I'm gonna go through the intentions right now. So what intentions? So 
we've talked a little bit about the different kinds of programs. So then the intentions is really, um, the intention is really to go through what kind of programs do you want to release this time? So release, not mind programs, release, activate. Not meaningful to my path programs, release, activate. Present line programs in the central line, release, activate, because we want to release anything that is, that may be potentially able to block your central line, which is the, the prana tube that I'm talk, I've talked about. And so these are really the, the most important things to release, programs to release for present life. And also, um, I've actually experimented with being a bit more specific is, let's say, all relationship programs, not meaningful to my path, release, activate. I've also done all financial programs, not meaningful to my path, release, activate. So instead of just not mean, meaningful to my path programs, release, activate, to just be a bit more specific is all um, financial programs not meaningful to my path release activate. So since you all going to um, you you all wanted to do financial programs, so that's what we will be doing very shortly. I just need to go through one more thing. So. Once we've cycled through all the different um, intentions that you want to do, and actually each one will only take a couple of seconds because they are present life programs, so they are not as, um, I would say, heavy handed. So just usually just breathe in and breathe out with that intention to let it go and we'll be done. And then once you've released all the programs that you want to release, then you want to strengthen your boundaries. Um, I know before I, what I've done is, is all boundaries are strong, activate. However, um, Sifu James mentioned that how he does it is he actually specify which layer it is. And if that's what Sifu James does, then I am going to um, like follow that because he's, he's the master. He knows all about, he knows the best way to do this, these things. So that's why, uh, that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do each layer. So physical, etheric, emotional, mental layer. So those are the first four layers. Um, so, those boundaries is strong. So I'm gonna activate the, the, the boundaries being strong for each of those layers separately. So before I go on to actually do this process with you, I just want to open up the floor for any questions so far before we actually go do this. I feel like my energy is not the strongest or not strong as I usually am. So am I still good to do it or not? Absolutely, because we're going to do it in the whole group. So okay. group energy uh, is actually our, our uh, energy is stronger. So if you don't feel your energy is strong, then definitely do it in the group. Okay. Okay. Any, uh, any other questions, comments? If not, then let's do it. So I'm gonna 